president of today's uh, function, our distinguished vice chancellor, Dr. Arvind Kumar, chairperson of the Paulus Magdagorius Chair of the University, Father Dr. K.M. George, moderator, Professor Naushad, who is the director of the School of Gandhi Studies, all the members of the teaching faculty, the respected members, the clergy who are present here today, all the students who are gathered here, my dear brothers and sisters and all others who have come for this uh, function today. Before I render my formal lecture, permit me to make a few observations about the university, because this is my first visit to this campus. Uh, and uh, I could really enjoy the the atmosphere of uh, the green atmosphere of the ecosophy around here. You have a wonderful campus. I could learn a little bit of uh, of your various uh, uh, teaching uh, departments, which are called as schools, following the pattern laid by your first vice chancellor, the legendary Dr. U. R. Anandamurthy. I could uh, also learn that you still don't have a formal department of philosophy here, which I find as a little bit of uh, a problem to be resolved by a university which is uh, established in the name of uh, the Mahatma. We all have uh, the very foundation of human rights is on the basis of our love for wisdom and uh, therefore it's only befitting that uh, the university authorities and the state authorities should uh, seriously think of uh, starting a formal uh, school or department of philosophy uh, in this uh, university in the times to come. I know there are serious problems of student enrollment uh, uh, in Kerala, especially in uh, Kottayam and nearby districts due to reasons more than one, especially due to student migration and other issues. But it's also heartening to see a lot of young friends who are gathered here who have taken away the time to attend this function. With these informal words, uh, let me uh, formally begin my uh, the uh, responsibility that is uh, in invested in me. Today we gather to reflect on the legacy of uh, Dr. Paulus Magdagorius, a luminary whose thoughts on human freedom, dignity and rights are as profound as they are timeless. Known for his uh, penetrating insights and global vision, Dr. Gregorius was described by former Supreme Court Judge Justice V. R. Krishnaya as a cultural wonder and a global wanderer with a head and heart full of spiritual wear and moral corals. Justice Iyer, who shared a deep intellectual kinship with Dr. Gregorius, noted, quote, what brought me closer to him is a crimson spirituality whereby socialism meets the humanism and both blend with supreme light, unquote. This rich description captures the very essence of uh, the life of Dr. Gregorius and his thoughts, an unwavering commitment to justice, dignity and compassion that transcends borders ideologies and uh, doctrines. His life journey from his early years in Kerala to his uh, experiences in Ethiopia profoundly shaped his worldview on human dignity and unity. Serving as an educational advisor to Emperor Haile Selassie, he was deeply moved by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church's uh, rich cultural and spiritual heritage. This encounter strengthened his belief in the shared spiritual essence of humanity and the beauty of religious diversity. His Ethiopian experience inspired a lifelong commitment to ecumenism, promoting unity among Christian traditions and a vision of interfaith harmony that transcends religious boundaries. His journey, starting from humble beginnings in Kerala to a life of profound scholarship and spiritual leadership as an Eastern Orthodox theologian, philosopher, and metropolitan of the Malangara Orthodox Syrian Church and his life experiences shaped his worldview, his encounters with poverty, injustice and inequality, deepened his commitment 
to human dignity as a universal right. His empathy and spirituality forced a philosophy that transcended religious boundaries, advocating for a world where dignity, respect and compassion form the foundation of human interaction. Through his teachings and writings, Dr. Guru emphasized that dignity is inherent, a divine aspect of every human being's existence and his life ex exemplified a deep respect for dignity across cultures and faiths. Through his leadership in the World Council of Churches and various interfaith dialogues, he championed the idea that true human dignity is honored where faiths come together in mutual respect, compassion and a shared quest for truth. His view of human freedom and dignity was grounded in a sense of spiritual wholeness. To him, every individual was a unique reflection of a divine light capable of profound self-realization and worthy of respect. This awareness guided his belief that each person holds an innate dignity, a value that no external force can dim diminish. He viewed freedom as a divine at attribute, essential for all humanity, transcending gender and cultural boundaries. His reflections call upon us to recognize that freedom and dignity are not merely abstract ideals, but essential aspects of what it means to be human. This legacy challenges us to envision a world that fosters these values, a world where socialism meets humanism, united in a shared commitment to justice, empathy and the common good. In a world often swayed by political and economic interests, his thoughts challenges us to recognize the sanctity of the individual. He viewed each person not as a mere cog in the societal machine, but as a being with inherent worth, endowed with a purpose that transcends time. He once observed, quote, to live without, a, uh, without an awareness of who we are and what we are meant to be is perhaps the greatest tragedy of the human condition, unquote. This conviction served as a cornerstone of his life's work, driving his advocacy for a society that nurtures the whole person. His life was indeed a testament to the compassionate activism challenging exploitation and advocating for justice. He believed in the personality power of love, asserting that true freedom is rooted in the pursuit of truth and justice. Now let me deal with the concept of freedom in the thought of Mark Gregorius. Human freedom to Dr. Gregorius is not simply the absence of restraint or oppression. It is a profound ability to actualize one's deepest potential. In his writings, he distinguished between external liberty and internal freedom, emphasizing that true freedom arises when individuals can cultivate inner strength and insight. For him, inner freedom was a spiritual and intellectual state, a realm where human beings connect with their purpose. His vision of freedom was closely intertwined with a collective responsibility, reminding us that no individual exists in isolation. In his words, Quote, true freedom does not reside in selfish pursuits but in the service of others, but only through the well-being of all that can attain true liberty, unquote. This ideal speaks to the duties that come with freedom, advocating a balance that respects personal autonomy while fostering communal harmony. As we reflect on his legacy, let us commit to fostering the ideals he once championed, unity, respect, and unwavering support for the marginalized. His views on human freedom profoundly shaped his advocacy for justice and peace. He believed that true freedom is a divine attribute, essential for all, for all individuals, and endorsed with dignity of every person, regardless of gender or background. In our contemporary world, rights often foreshadow responsibilities, leading to a society where freedom is perceived merely as the right of the individual to express individual expression or economic success. He, however, calls upon us to remember that freedom is rooted in moral consciousness requiring self-awareness, <coughs> humility and a devotion to the greater good. Now to deal with human dignity as a universal right. Dignity in his thought is both inherent and relational. It is inherent because every human life possesses value beyond measure. It is relational because dignity is expressed and honored within communities 
and every human being's worth is, is intertwined with that of others. He passionately believed that human rights, human dignity is inviolable, not contingent upon societal status, wealth or achievements. He often drew from religious teachings affirming the belief that dignity is granted to every human being by virtue of their very existence. In his words, the divine spark provide, resides in all a reminder that every soul deserves respect, compassion and love. This principle resonates with the foundational doctrines of human rights and reminds us of the obligations that we hold to at least individual irrespective of background or belief. He stands on dignity, challenges us to re-evaluate our societal structures in a world where consumerism and technology often diminish personal value, his philosophy invites us to safeguard each individual's worth. As he wisely noted, quote, dignity is a ground from which human freedom springs. Without it, freedom becomes self-serving and rights become tools for division rather than unity, unquote. Now, human rights as a moral imperative. Dr. Gregorius's reflections on human rights stem from his belief in the shared human experience. Rights, as he viewed them, are not privileges granted by governments, but universal entitlements derived from human dignity. He recognized that true progress demands a commitment to societal justice, advocating that a society which respects human rights is one that has reached a higher moral consciousness. His commitment to justice was evident in his passionate challenge, challenges against oppression, colonialism, and economic exploitation, often placing him in direct confrontation with powerful entities. He emphasized the need for a just society lined with Christian principles, advocating social restructuring to address uh, systemic poverty and inequality. Yet he cautioned against reducing human rights to a mere legal framework. To him, rights are deeply moral concepts rooted in empathy and solidarity. He noted, quote, when we speak of rights, let us remember the, the means through which society acknowledges the inestimable worth of each individual, unquote. This reminder urges us to uphold rights not out of legal obligation alone, but as a reflection of our own humanity. In his view, human rights without a foundation of dignity and freedom are hollow. They become tools for self-interest rather than pathways to justice. His stance aligns well with the Uni Universal Declaration of Human Rights, particularly in its preamble, which states recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of justice, freedom, justice and peace in the world. Now coming to harmonize rights and responsibilities, a distinguishing feature of his philosophy is, is his insistence that human rights must be balanced by responsibilities. He believed that rights, when exercised without responsibility, lead to societal fragmentation. Rights, if not tempered by duties, he once observed, become blind to the needs of others, and blind rights give rise to a world of competition rather than compassion. In the current discourse on rights, where demands of individual entitlements often foreshadow collective responsibilities, his message is particularly resonant. He urges us to approach rights with humility, seeing them as a means to fulfill our duty towards others. True human rights advocacy, in his view, is not merely about enforcing laws, it's about cultivating a culture where each individual recognizes their role in uplifting the community. The next two parts are on ethical foundations of human rights and a call for compassionate leadership for enforcing human rights. I will then go to the next part regarding his, his vision for the future. The vision of Dr. Gregorius for the future remains a clarion call to our generation. He envisioned a world where every person, regardless of their origins or beliefs, could live with dignity, freedom and rights that nurture rather than constrain. In a mem memorable statement, he said, quote, the future will judge us not by the power we wielded, but by the dignity we granted to the weakest among us. Now, to the concluding remarks, his vision of human uh, dignity, freedom and rights align closely with the philosophical evolution of human rights, 
which centers on the inherent worth of the individual. In his view, dignity is the foundation of all human value, a sacred quality that each person carries by virtue of their existence, which in turn grounds their freedom and rights. Philosophers over centuries, from Enlightenment thinkers to modern human rights advocates, have argued that rights are not granted by states, but derived from intrinsic dignity of each human being. Freedom in this context is more than the absence of oppression, it's a capacity to realize one's potential within a just society. Dr. Gregorius took this further, seeing freedom as intrinsically tied to the well-being of others, underscoring mutual responsibilities that uphold rights. His philosophy reflects a view where dignity is inseparable from rights and freedom, each serving as pillars of moral and humane society, echoing the deepest aspirations of human rights philosophy for a world of respect, justice, and solidarity. As you reflect upon its words, may we find in them a call to action, a call to build a world worthy of the inherent worth he saw in every human being. For as he reminded us, our greatest purpose is not in seeking power, but in honoring the beauty and dignity of, the human soul, of each human soul. In reflecting his profound insights, we are reminded that the true strength of human rights lies in the philosophical foundation, a foundation that honors human freedom, upholds dignity, and binds us in mutual respect. His vision urges us to see human rights not merely as entitlements or protections, but as moral imperatives woven into the fabric of our shared humanity. At its core, his philosophy teaches that freedom, dignity, and rights are inter interconnected ideals that together elevate the human experience. As we carry forward his legacy, may we strive to root, out, to root our actions and policies in these principles, recognizing that a just society begins with an unwavering commitment to the dignity of every individual. In doing so, we not only honor the legacy of Metropolitan Dr. Paulus Magregorius, but also contribute to a world that reflects the highest aspirations of human rights. Reflecting on the philosophical foundation of human rights, we find that the true strength lies in an unwavering commitment to freedom, dignity, and mutual respect. Human rights are not merely entitlements or legal protections. They are profound moral imperatives that recognize the intrinsic worth of every person. This foundation teaches us that freedom, dignity, and rights are interwoven ideals essential to a just and humane society by upholding these principles, we honor the highest aspirations of humanity, creating a world where each individual's inherent value is recognized and protected and nurtured. Let this understanding guide us, reminding us that a genuinely just society begins with our commitment to, uh, to these timeless values. Let me conclude by quoting Nelson Mandela, who said, to deny people their human rights is to challenge their very humanity. Thank you.